so much. Okay, so welcome to Healing Emotionally with Laughter Yoga Practices. And I'm so excited to be here today and tell you a little bit about laughter and how we can heal emotionally from it. And some of you must be wondering, should I bring my mat, my yoga mat for this presentation? Uh, no, you don't. Um, you're gonna get to see that we use the term yoga more for, for the breathing aspect of it. Uh, we're gonna play by ear how much I'm gonna have you participate in the end to, to give it a try with laughter yoga. For those that are hiding behind the screen, you can remain hidden, but be prepared that maybe later on we'll like to see each other's faces in order to maybe get a taste of what laughter yoga experience will look like. So if you need to fix your hair a little bit for that, uh, just be on notice of it. But thank you again for having me to be able to present on this topic. Let me just tell you a little bit about myself and my journey with laughter yoga. Uh, I've been searching for laughter ever since I can remember. I think all of us somehow in an innate way, we gravitate towards laughter. But for me, it has been an interesting journey ever since I got certified as a laughter yoga facilitator. Uh, because as a licensed mental health therapist, I have found myself using it a lot more with depressed clients uh, than what I thought I would, especially when I first started working at the behavioral hospital. Uh, my experience there utilizing laughter yoga as group therapy uh, was transformational, uh, especially for patients at the hospital that they don't remember when was the last time they had ever laughed laughed and having the experience of laughter yoga where they started laughing in a healthy, mirthful way, they just couldn't believe themselves that that was actually happening and how much better they felt. Sometimes uh, a natural high that lasted over a week just by having one uh, hour of experience of laughter yoga. So just seeing those type of transformations and, and the stories that I heard from from the clients back in the day when I used to work at the behavioral hospital, really kept me going uh, with this practice of laughter yoga. I am an assistant professor for the University of Troy, and I actually apply laughter yoga not only through therapeutic uh, environments, but also in my classes with my students. In my practical and internship classes, we sometimes do laughter yoga sessions in the end. Uh, so you're gonna learn today all the varieties and ways on how we can apply this practice uh, to the benefit and with the goal of pursuing uh, healing emotionally and dealing with, with stress. So I hope that you're ready for uh, a quiz time here. Uh, I'm about to ask you some questions and see how much you know. Uh, let's start with smiling first. So we're going to do a laughter, uh, a laughter quiz. So how many different types of smile? And, and if the monitor can help me with the chat um, and the answers, that will be great. But I'm going to open my chat here so I can see the responses. How many different types of smile are there? Let's see if we can guess. If you can guess how many different types of smile are there if you guys can just type your responses on the chat see if someone gets it right and just take a while guess even if you don't know the answer you see if you get close to that so someone here said 40 okay 18 okay 100 12 4 okay so we're all over the range here huh let's see what the answer is 52 <laughs> it depends on the person Actually, uh, someone got it right. It was 18. Thank you, Kimberly. Um, yeah, so they're actually scientists, the science of laugh, laughter, they have been able to identify up to 18 different ways of, of smiling uh, on human behavior. Now, I guess even more interesting, up to how many muscles can be used when smiling? So take a guess. When we're smiling, especially when, and, and now we know that there are 18 different smiles, so, but up to how many muscles can be engaged when we're smiling? What would you say? That's another wild 
uh, guess. 22, 100, 6, okay. 100, okay, well, let's see what's the answer. 53 muscles. It depends on what kind of smile you're engaging. It could be anywhere from only three muscles all the way to 53, pretty much engaging most of the muscles on your face. So that's a, a pretty active and engaging if you ask me. Now, here's a maybe tricky question for you, but I love the how interesting this is. How do blind babies learn to smile? Can anybody take a guess on how blind babies, if they're born, they cannot see their mother smiling, how do they learn to smile? Tonalities, maybe like they hear the sound and they have that reaction, okay. Thank you, Heather, for that. Other thoughts? So when they are touched, maybe they're being tickled, therefore they, they smile, that's possible. Good point. Let's see. They just know. We're born with it. We don't have to learn to smile. In fact, smiling is a biological function of happiness. It's not a culturally learned emotion. So this is not something that you have to learn. You're born knowing this. It's an innate uh, bio, natural biological uh, function of us human. So that tells you right there how important it is for us to smile. Uh, therefore, laugh as well. And I think I have one more for you. Up to how many feet away can a smile be visible? Take a moment. Think about that for a moment. How far can you go where you can still see a smile? How many feet? And if you could just, somebody said about 10, about 20. Okay. Any others? 50, 50. Okay. 30. Okay. So we're getting, again, at all kinds of different ranges, which is great. Actually, all the way up to 300 feet. That's how far away you can still see someone smiling. And in fact, back in the day, tribes rely on this uh, visual in order to be able to decide whether this was a safe group or not. Uh, for their own survival. So they rely on being able to see if someone was smiling as far away as for, from 300 feet to see if it was an enemy or not. And here's the last uh, little uh, thing I want you to test. Give this a try. Stretch your neck backwards all the way and your head and look up and see what happens to your facial muscles. So take your neck all the way back, all the way back, and then come, let your face relax and see what happens to your facial muscles. And you will notice that you actually get a natural smile coming from your face. And that was just for fun. There's not any other answer to that. Thank you for engaging uh, with me on the quiz. So let's talk a little bit about, okay, for, the, therapy, the history of therapeutic laughter. I mean, we were smiling since we we're born, right? But when did we figure out that laughter perhaps is something that we can use to heal or to take care of ourselves? And it starts going back to in the 1960s, William Fry, he's known for the father of gelatology. And gelatology is a term used as the science of laughter. And he is the individual uh, that from Stanford University that started to do the research on the benefits of laughter. Unfortunately, during that time, the Vietnam War, a lot of the funding uh, was frozen, but he, he was the one that was looking at some of the uh, benefits of the heart rate uh, when people were laughing. Then in the 1970s, Dr. Hunter Adams, uh, the, his character was played by Robin Williams, uh, became famous because he brought laughter into the hospitals and they noticed how patients um, were doing better when they were laughing more. 
and he brought laughter through being dressed as clowns and uh, applying some humor in, during those visits. In the 1980s, Dr. Lee Berg uh, actually started treating the immune system with laughter. Not only that, he realized that uh, different antibodies and hormones were being released for those individuals that were practicing laughter, uh, including a, a release of, of, of dealing better with cortisol and endorphins. In fact, in his studies, he found that just the idea of people thinking that they're about to laugh, that something funny is about to happen, even just with the anticipation, they were seeing those positive benefits in their immune system as they were being uh, studied. So it's, it's fascinating to see that our brain is so adapted and prepared to receive laughter as a way of healing. They also have done some other research on cardiovascular benefits of people that were assigned uh, to watch uh, something funny before going to bed as part of their cardiovascular uh, treatment for arrhythmias and, and, and issues with their heart. The, the group that was using humor as a part of their treatment needed, needed about 50% less of medication and reported uh, significantly less symptoms than the group that was just using the medication. So there, we're, we're on to something here when it comes to laughter and how it can benefit us. Then we have uh, Norman Cousins. Uh, he was uh, a famous writer. Uh, in fact, he got 50, he got honored 50 uh, PhDs uh, along the way in his professional career. And he became famous because of the bestseller of the book, um, How One Man Proved Your Mind Can Cure Your Body, Anatomy of an Illness. He had this fatal illness that he says that he got cured from it from using laughter as a treatment. And his pain was so badly that the only thing that will allow him to sleep for two hours straight without waking up from the pain was from practicing a mirthful laughter uh, for about 20 minutes before going to bed. And that lasted then for two hours of free pain sleeping. So publishing a book like this and, and him becoming famous because of uh, realizing that his illness, which was fatal, got better from the treatment of laughter because he said not even more morphine for his pain was helping, but laughter did. Uh, really sparked the curiosity of other scientists uh, and the actual research of, wait a minute, laughter is, is something more than just having a good time and laughing. We're seeing a great deal of benefit here. And it really has uh, exploded around the world, uh, understanding the science of happiness. And we're becoming a lot more curious about what makes us happy, what makes us more optimistic, is joy actually in our genes. Uh, why is it that really we need to laugh rather than um, are we laughing more, are we laughing less, what's making things more funny in our life? So all these questions are starting to spark all over the place and, and we're coming up with some good answers on how it can increase the quality of your life. So along, along, oh, sorry, along the way of the research, we're looking at the benefits of laughter and some of the things that are listed here, especially when it comes to the mental aspect of it, it releases endorphins. And, and the type of endorphins that are linked to positive mood, just like the same endorphins that get released when you're going out for a nice run, you get a nice workout, you get exactly the same benefit when we're uh, practicing laughter. It reduces stress, anxiety, and depression, and it definitely improves life satisfaction. It helps also with retention and concentration. Uh, in fact, one school in Canada started uh, providing laughter yoga in the mornings for the first five minutes. All the students are get, getting to do some laughter. And people were worried about, are you kidding me? We're going to lose the students. They're just going to go crazy and misbehave, thinking it's just, let's just be clowns. And it quite happened just differently because this, this, they reported that the students were able to be calmer, concentrate and better records of discipline. So it tells you that 
laughter actually can help with reducing some of the anxiety or hyperactivity on the students so they can concentrate more. Then you look at the physical benefits. And for the physical benefits, there's a, that's what a lot of the research was looking into, the natural killer cells uh, that help with the immune system and specifically with a fight, fighting infection for your immune system, but also uh, the same cells that can help you with dealing with pain. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, how it also can provide uh, similar cardiovascular benefits, the same ones you, you get for exercise. Did you know that if you were to laugh for about uh, five minutes, your, their, your heartbeat rate will last just like a regular cardio workout of 20 minutes. So it will double your heartbeat rate uh, to get the benefit that feels just like a, a workout. And it makes you more creative and it promotes learning. So that's why I find myself using laughter these days more and more into the classroom. And we're starting to see the benefits of that. So when we're looking at how we can actually heal with laughter, we're thinking, gosh, you know, we're going through a lot of negative things. You know, we have been through a pandemic. We're going through so much social and political tensions. And we will say, why would we want to laugh if we're going through so much negativity? But it's quite the opposite. We need to laugh more when we're going through difficult times because that's what's going to give you the healing that you need through those awful times. So the ability to laugh removes layers of inhibition, programming and mental roadblocks created by the self, family, and society. And you see, part of the problem is that our brain has a, what we call a, a negativity bias. So we have this tendency to look more at the negative than the positive. And the problem with that is that we end up resisting those negative experiences rather than embracing them or accepting them or even letting go of them. We hold on to a lot of, of some of these negative experiences or why this has to happen to me or, or I just want to let go of the resentment or the anger or whatever it is that you're upset about uh, and choosing to moving on instead. And I want to share with you a little story uh, a, a real issue that's happening in Mumbai, India, where they have a population of monkeys that are out of control. And you will say, you know, that's a cute little monkey. I wouldn't mind seeing those around in my neighborhood, but they can be quite uh, vicious and dangerous uh, to, to humans. And they're trying to figure out how they can control um, so many monkeys around the city and they came out with a clever way to capture them. They will take these coconuts and they will make a hole inside the coconut big enough for a banana to go inside and for the hand of the monkey to be able to go in but once the monkey will grab the banana inside the coconut and will try to pull it out as a fist then it will be stuck. And they place this coconuts all over the electricity poles in the city and the monkey will smell the banana, will start crawling up to, to go grab it and then he will, oh, sorry, sorry, I need to, and will grab the, the, the banana and close its fist and be stuck and the monkey will see the capture coming in, getting closer and closer. The monkey is it's upset that the captor is coming to grab him, but will never let go of the banana. And 99% of the times they were, they were able to capture these monkeys. And the reason why, why I bring this story is because I want you to ask yourself, how many bananas in our life are we holding on to that we're not willing to let go? We're not willing to let go because it feels unfair or because our ego is taking, uh, a dominant role or we're just simply not ready to forgive or, or, or release that resentment. And we have found that through the practice of laughter, you find yourself not taking things so seriously. And you find yourself being more forgiving and willing to connect more with others. And this is what Dr. Madame Kateria uh, 
come into playing a role with laughter yoga. He's the founder of laughter yoga. Back in the 1990s, he was a primary doctor and he was doing some research on the benefits of uh, laughter and he was fascinated by what he found. And he said, you know what? I wanna apply this more into my life. It's, he had a very stressful life being a doctor in, in actually Mumbai, India. And he decided to gather a group of colleagues and friends early in the morning to meet at the park and come up with funny things to share so they can start laughing and then go on their ways to work. And it became a hit because people were feeling better. They noticed that they were more energized in a better mood to deal and tackle the stress at work. And the group started becoming bigger and bigger and bigger early in the mornings. And uh, the problem is that they started running out of what to share. Uh, maybe the jokes started getting a little offensive. People were complaining. So Dr. Kateria, as a man of science that he was, he said, you know, let me do some more research. I don't want to stop this because we're getting the benefit from it. Uh, just give me some time uh, to figure this out. And this is when he uh, came up in his findings from the research. And this, if there's something that I want you to remember from this conference today is, is this finding. And that is that the brain does not know the difference between a real laugh and a fake laugh. In other words, that even if you were to start laughing fake, like <laughs> this is, that was very fake. But if I kept, if I were to keep doing that, my brain wouldn't know the difference. And all those benefits that I listed to you earlier will, will start happening either way. However, what happens is that even if I were to start laughing in a fake manner, with a group of people, eventually that fake laugh will become contagious laughter and then it will become authentic. So there's that benefit when you do it with a group of people. So this is how laughter yoga was created because their Storkateria realized that we don't need to come out with jokes or look at something funny. All we need to do is just to find an excuse to laugh. So again, what does downward facing dog and laughter yoga have in common? Well, the only yoga aspect of laughter yoga is, is because you get to breathe the, uh, the prana, the, the practice of, of of breathing, right? Every time you laugh, you exhale. Laughter yoga also has a beautiful, beautiful portion where you get to meditate at the end. And then the meditation is through laughter, letting all your inhibitions out of the door and just let yourself go with laughter. And I'll show you how that looks like in a moment. So let me give you some examples of how the practice of laughter yoga is. So basically, we got to come up with different scenarios, this, as silly and as childish as you can imagine. Uh, and then you put a group into those practices and then instruct them to laugh as you're creating these scenarios. So again, because you can start with fake laughter, eventually, inevitably, people will start laughing. Uh, authentically anyways. So you come up with all kinds of different scenarios. I'm, gonna, I'm going to give you some ideas uh, at the end of this presentation on how that will look like. And if we're lucky, maybe we could get to, to practice some virtually as well. Um, obviously this picture was pre-pandemic days. Don't we miss that? In fact, laughter yoga uh, is being used successfully in corporations in businesses in the morning or just for special uh, presentations, think about it. All that toxicity among coworkers, resentments or whatever it's going on, when you get together and you start laughing, it's hard to hold on to those resentments. We let go of a lot of those bananas 
uh, when we're connecting with people through laughter, right? Uh, so some of those rough edges or resentments kind of go away and, and we, then we can start creating connections. Um, same thing uh, dealing with uh, culturally, cultural differences. Laughter doesn't have any cultural difference. It doesn't matter where you go around the world, people connect through laughter and that is a beautiful thing. This is my favorite part of laughter yoga, the laughter yoga meditation. And this is where after a number of scenarios and exercises just to laugh, you end the practice by laying down on the floor. And if you were holding on to some defensiveness or inhibitions about laughing in front of a group of people, the moment that you're laying down, that kind of goes away. And that's where this catharsis of laughter can occur. And this is where a lot of my clients at the behavioral hospital will have the most amazing experience because this is where they were actually able to let go. And sometimes I will get people that would just start crying. And, and, and that's not a bad thing. If someone starts crying through the middle of a session of laughter, it's just that it's, it's a catharsis experience. They're just completely let go. And those emotions are just flourishing out uh, in a positive healing way. I had the honor to be able to present at the American Counseling Association conference a few years back when it was done in Montreal, Canada. And I was the feature keynote speaker for, for the wellness portion of the conference. And what you see there, which is hard to capture the energy from a picture, but we had over 300 counselors came from all over uh, the nation. And uh, imagine a room full of up to 300 people laughing. And, and this is not necessarily the part where they were laughing out of control, but there was such a great energy in this room that I had a natural high from this uh, presentation that lasted for me and for everyone else for about a week or so. Uh, so it was an incredible experience to, to have all those people in one room and the willingness to lay down <laughs> on the floor on the carpet with no mat. I appreciated that as well. It was so much fun. So when you look at the unique features of laughter yoga, I mentioned some of this already, but Again, the unconditional laughter connects people from different cultures. The differences, uh, the social tensions, racial tensions, that goes away. It cultivates a childlike playfulness and joy. You see, we're told from a very early age to start acting like adults, right? And then we're, no one is telling us when it's okay to have fun and to be uh, like a child again and to really let go of some of those inhibitions. And it's a powerful practice to promote union between those who laugh together, resulting in family-like bonds. Every time I, I, I do a laughter yoga presentation where we actually get to do the activities, people, I see them, I see them walking down the hallway and saying, hey, laughter, and they start laughing again and, and relieving some of those moments. So it stays with you and, and, and those connections uh, remain as well. So it's, it's, it's a wonderful practice that you could use not only with family, but like I said, with clients and for those are our professors uh, with students and in group settings as well. So one area that people don't do enough that I think uh, we need to start mindfully practicing is to learn to laugh alone. Uh, and uh, one way to do that is, is use the mirror. And if, if we now get that the brain does not know the difference between a real laugh and a fake laugh, and you can get these amazing benefits then just use the mirror and start laughing yourself, right? And um, they have what's called the 50 smile practices. A study was uh, demonstrated 
that if you get 50 miles, 15, no miles, 50 smiles, which I promise you is a lot better to do 50 smiles than 50 miles a day of workout. But if you get to do 50 smiles and it's simply doing this, engaging your muscles in your face like that, and, and you know you can incorporate some of the fake laugh like <laughs> and just do that for 50 times using a mirror you will get all those amazing benefits if you use it incorporate it as part of your uh, i call it brain hygiene routine to take care of yourself you might even get to skip meditate skip a meditation by getting the benefit of just doing 50 smiles you can actually call yourself and leave a message in your own voicemail uh, where you're just going to start laughing. I actually do it a lot where I know I'm calling a friend that they cannot pick up their phone. And then I just start laughing. I just leave a, a whole long voicemail of, of laugh. And I know inevitably they will laugh when they hear that message. So it's, it's, it's a win-win situation because I feel like I'm doing something good for a friend. Of course, they also will think that I'm crazy and that's okay. Uh, believe it or not, if you go to Laughter Yoga International online, they have a laugh hotline. That's right. You can actually call the number. And there are wonderful people that are volunteering to laugh with you on the phone. And they have them scheduled at different times of the day. And let me tell you, it can become really handy. I remember one time, uh, I was on my way uh, to get a root canal and I get so anxious about getting that kind of procedure and I was sitting in my car waiting for it and I said you know what I could just go ahead and call the yoga laughter yoga hotline and just start laughing on the phone and what was really funny is that there was only one guy in the call on the call and all he was doing was just doing the fake laugh he was just going like ha 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 he 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 Ho, ho, ho. And he just kept doing that over and over. But that caused me, for whatever reason, I found it so funny. So I just really started laughing naturally. And by the time it was uh, time for the doctor to see me, I felt great. That anxiety was gone. So it, I encourage you to go to laughteryogainternational.com or just Google Laugh Hotline to see the times where you can use it. This is a great way to also, if you're doing family therapy, you could do a family session and, 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 and use that laugh hotline as a warm up. Uh, you could do it with a group, you could do it with your own family members. Again, it creates that connection. Uh, it releases some of that tension or resentment, okay? Be mindful with your laughter, set your watch to laugh. Again, we, we don't laugh enough. Our ten tendency to be negative, uh, that comes very natural to us, but we have to be more mindful. And setting your watch to laugh is not a bad idea at all. I like to get the chat, engage the chat here again. So you guys can maybe give me or share what other ways can we incorporate, can you incorporate laughter into your life? Uh, even if it means laughing alone, what other ways can you find yourself uh, to do it? So I'll give you a moment to just start typing uh, some responses, just some thoughts you might have. How can you bring more laughter into your life? Absolutely, Theresa. Watching funny animal videos, you can never go wrong with those. Um, you know, watching comedies, being intentional to say, you know what, I get the benefit of laughter, I want to watch a funny movie or something that will make me laugh. Reading funny books. You know, another way that you can laugh more is watch children more often and see how they find reasons to laugh. They laugh at the silliest things, right? Uh, to just be silly. Allow yourself to be silly and laugh anytime when something funny happens as, as somebody just shared. 
Uh, oh wow, there's a YouTube channel where it's try not to laugh. I like that. We're about to watch a really funny one too. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Playing on the playground. We need to be childlike a lot more often. I love that. Uh, again, remove your adult hat thinking and we become even more creative on finding ways on how to laugh. And I promise you, uh, like I said earlier, you can learn so much from children on getting those ideas on how to be silly and how to laugh more. Thank you so much for sharing some of those ideas uh, because those opportunities are there and we're missing it. Worse, the, even the most simplest practice when you wake up in the morning, the first thing you do is take yourself a look in the mirror and just say, <laughs> take a good laugh at yourself, right? Why not, right? Beautiful. Uh, we'll, we'll get more opportunities to find ideas on how we can laugh. Um, and we'll talk about that. Thank you for sharing, guys. You're awesome. Okay, so laughter is contagious. And if you don't believe me, I'm about to prove it to you. Uh, the video that you're about to watch is uh, contains the experience of a man that has been classified as having the most contagious laugh there in the world. And I want you to suck it all, all in. I want you to, 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 if you find it funny, just let your body laugh with him because it is an amazing experience. I have watched this video over and over and over and every time I find it incredibly funny. Uh, so let's take a look. I'm going to escape here for a moment and uh, And share the video with you guys. Okay. So I want you to watch the guy that's right in the middle with a yellow shirt. And uh, you see how the man that's facilitating this, this show they lose control Steve, of the whole situation. Steve, good to have you here, Steve. Where are you from? Alabama, anybody else? Man, what do you do for a living, Steve? Work for the government. No wonder it took you so long to get up here. Let me ask you, Steve. What do you do for the government? Think about it for a while. You watch people work. Oh, you're a supervisor. What do you do? You build tanks. No kidding. You build like tanks for the army tanks. No kidding. What part of the tank you build? You just watch it get built. No kidding. Man, that's a government job right there, isn't it? Who else can What's your job? I watch tanks get built. You just watch it. What's the most common problem with a tank? It's wore out. What about while it's getting built? Where you're supposed to watch for problems. It... Said what? What about? Folks, 
This show may be over. <laughs> because he goes on and on and on and they just can't recuperate from it. Mm -hmm. And uh, th this individual was actually interviewed uh, at the Neurological La University over in, in, in London and they invited him to their lab to be able to understand what they really wanted to see what's going on in your brain because he says one he once he starts laughing he cannot stop it and he shares the the story of being able to survive using laughter as a as a survival skill for him because he used to be bully and when the, the guys will try to attack him he will get nervous and start coming up with this really funny laugh and they would just stop on their tracks. So it became a survival skill for him to be able to laugh uh, this way. So it's really interesting uh, to listen to his story on how, he, and he says he just cannot stop. And in the lab actually in the brain scan showed that uh, his brain actually has an abnormal activity that they don't see on regular people that are laughing. So something to, really fascinating. Uh, I'm trying to share screen with you guys here again. So it's, it, I hope that you were laughing. I don't know, we, we can't hear you, but I have to tell you, uh, it's hard not to. So I hope that you enjoy that video. And it comes down to, to this. You don't stop laughing uh, because you grow old. You grow old because you stop laughing. We're not laughing enough. And we find because or we feel that just because we're going through stressors or life gets more difficult, then we use that as an excuse or a reason to even laugh, to laugh even less. And it's quite the opposite. We need to laugh more and we don't need to wait until we've got something funny to do it. We come, come out with our own reasons and excuses to do it. Joy comes to us in ordinary moments. And we risk missing out when we get too busy chasing down the extraordinary. So this opportunity that laughter yoga brings is that we can just find an excuse to laugh for no reason in, with the most ordinary practice. So th the question that I have for you today is, can you give yourself permission to bring that joyful inner child in you? What would that look like to release some of that laughter for no reason and, and that practice of laughter yoga can do that for you. So what I like to do, we only have about five minutes. So I, what I wanna do is that I wanna give a try and do a teaser of what a laughter yoga could look like. And obviously it's not the same visually versus doing this in person, but I promise you we could get a lot of it out uh, doing visually as well. But it's just gonna be like a little teaser, a little taste. So what I'm going to do now as I warned you earlier in the presentation, is I would love for you guys to join me. 
and opening my gallery here, I'm going to stop sharing for a moment. I'm going to just open the gallery view. And I'm going to invite people to show their faces for a moment. If you don't mind, don't be shy. It's going to take just a moment. I love to see your faces. Sometimes it feels lonely for the presenter not to see your faces. I love to see your faces. All those people that are hiding behind the camera. Look at all those beautiful faces coming up. And uh, we're going to try a little bit of laughter yoga. I want to warn you that it might be hazardous to your misery. You might get on the way of your misery if you start laughing today. You might get in the way of your resentment if you start laughing today with me. So I hope you don't mind uh, doing this. It's not mandatory, so if you don't want to show your face, don't worry about it. But the other thing I'm going to ask you to do is to actually unmute yourself because if we're relying on the laughter to be contagious, we have to hear others. So if you guys don't mind unmuting, hopefully you, as long as you don't have a lot of noise in the background, let's go ahead and unmute so I can hear you out. Okay. Cool. All right. So, so one way how you introduce laughter yoga practice is through a warm up. And a way to do a warm up is just using the basic. Um, Sounds of laughter. What would be a basic sound of laughter? You have to come up with one. Uh -huh. Ha ha, right? It's just, just ha ha, it's very simple, right? So again, because this is yoga, you, will, you want to involve your breathing as well. So you should take a deep inhale and then go ha. Huh. Ha. Just like that. Just like that. You want to hear those voices. Beautiful. All right. So try that again. Uh, and, and, and if you can mute yourself, unmute yourself. Take a deep inhale. And go, ha. <laughs> Just like that. So you're engaging. You're really as well. And some of you, I, I, you see what I love when I do this live? is I always gonna have one or two people that are just gonna laugh for nothing. And I love that, like I gravitate and I attach to you guys because those are the ones that, that help me uh, make it contagious for the rest of the people. What's another basic sound? Can you think of other basic sounds? We have ha ha ha. He <laughs> he. He, he, he. I love he, he, he. I'm a natural with he, he, he. Look. <laughs> See, it goes pretty natural. So just let's just give this a try, okay? Let's try to take a deep inhale and just go. for no reason because I see you guys laughing and then what's the final one what's the final basic sound come on it's the most popular one in the world during the holidays oh, oh, oh. <laughs> right? so I want you to imagine you have a big belly and maybe you don't have to imagine it and that's okay too and just go take a deep inhale place your hands around your belly and go and feel that miracle laughter here <laughs> Try this. Try to combine them all. So you, this is remember I told you that funny guy while I was waiting for my dentist appointment like that. So just give this a try. We have a snorter. We have a snorter. <laughs> 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 I love it when I have a snorter. Makes it so much better. <laughs> All right. So remember the video we watched with this guy with the funky laugh. So let's do a try a little. I want to try a little contest. I want to see who makes 
the best imitation of this guy. And if you forgot how he laughed, let me show you. Yonk, 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 yonk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, brave enough to give an attempt of, of imitating his laugh. <laughs> Anybody willing to give it a try? It's not hard. Any takers? Don't be shy. This is your opportunity to be silly. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Was that you, Cody? Maria. Maria, good for you. Thank you. Give her a big applause because she takes some bravery. I love it. I love it. Okay. So this is just a t like I said, this is just a taste, right, of what laughter you got could look like. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do one more, okay? So we're going to do what's called a laughter yoga ball. Where if, if this was live, we will have a circle, right? And uh, we will be throwing each other's a laughter ball, right? So in this case, I'm just going to call your name. If I call your name, you're just going to pick up the ball and laugh, okay? So all of a sudden, everyone's going to mute this. I'm like, I don't want to play. But just let yourself go. Give yourself permission to do this one, okay? All right, so ready? Cody, I'm going to throw you a laughter ball. The way how you're going to do it is you're going to catch it, and you're going to catch it. I'm going to make a, a sound laugh, and you're going to catch it with the same sound the best you can, okay? And then you're going to come up with your own sound, and you have to call somebody out, laugh, and throw that ball to them, and so on. You got it? Got it. So you just pick someone that's unmuted, okay? Uh, but I'm gonna start with you. Ready? So I'm gonna go. Ha ha ha! Ha ha ha! Got it. Ho ho ho! Who are you giving it to? Dina. Oh. Ho ho ho! Um, he he he! Allison. He. Ho 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 ho! Erica. Um. Jennifer, Mary, um, ha ha ha, Allison, ha ha ha, Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Shelby, you yeah. dropped the ball. You let it down. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Uh, you can re you can throw it right back at me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> thank you. All right. Everyone, take your hands up. All the way. High, high, high. I'm not going to ask you to stand up because you might not be wearing shorts. And excellent. <laughs> And exhale down and go. Deep <laughs> <laughs> inhale, bring it up. And a big exhale. <laughs> <laughs> and the last time, inhale. And exhale. <laughs> <laughs> <All right. laughs> this is my. <laughs> This is my best attempt at trying laughter oh, yoga virtually. Yeah. <laughs> a lot better, I promise you, in person. But it's just a little taste. I wanted you guys to just give it a little try. And you were an amazing sport to, to giving this a try. Um, but like I said, if we, we were, if we were to do this live, there's a lot of moving going on, a lot of running around the room, all different kinds of ideas that you can come up with. Um, and then my favorite part is we get to lay on the floor and laugh. Uh, there are over 300 laughter yoga clubs around the world. If you just Google them, they're available hopefully in your town. Uh, they're free. These days they're becoming uh, more uh, virtual, unfortunately, but hopefully we'll come back to, to join uh, live very soon. So what I'd like to do is I'm going to leave the room open if you guys have any questions or any afterthoughts um, I'm happy to share any questions you might have about how to do this group Dr. Solomon I went ahead and launched the poll so if those that would like to participate could just um, put in their answers and then I will shut that down so that um, you all don't have to take too much time doing that I 
I like this. Yeah, uh, Cody, thank you. He actually shared the link for the laughter yoga. Uh, so feel free to visit that link. It's gonna give you all kinds of uh, information. And I hope that I'm happy to come over and do this presentation for anybody that would like me to do for your organization. Um, and we could do it virtually, I hope, or maybe in person, whatever works. So. <laughs>